So today we're going to be making a uh, water-cooled ITX microsystem. And basically what we're going to start with is our aluminum case right here by Lee and Lee. It's the strip-down case. I've got the case taken apart for easy construction. I put one hard drive already inside the cage. This is the cage that goes inside. We're going to be basically putting a bunch of crap inside this to make a computer. So, what are our basic guts on this thing? We've got the 120 to 120 gig SSD for our OS. Then we're going to be putting in two terabyte drives. Now the new three terabyte drives are going to work, but the two terabytes are what I went with for cost effectiveness. This was $89. I'm going to be able to put six inside. So you do the math. That's 12 terabytes of information plus your operating systems. And we went with the i7 quad core. It's the 1156 socket. The 1156 socket was made specifically for this small board. This is the Zotec ITX Wi-Fi board. This is made for the i-series, i7, i5, i3. This has built-in Wi-Fi, six SATA ports, one PCI Express 16 slot, and then the 224 pin on the back. We'll go into bigger detail as we get closer to putting things together. We went with the G-Skill Rip Jaw Memory. Um, I like the G-Skill brand. I've not had an issue with them. This is the second Zotac board that build that I've made, this customized build that I've made, the Zotac, and the G-Skill seem to work really well together without latency issues. So we went with the Zotac 8 gigs. That is the maximum this motherboard will allow you to use is 8 gigs. So, then we have our 650 watt power supply. Now, a lot of you are going to say, why are you using a 650 watt power supply with an i7? Well, the reason I went with a 650 was over a 700 was power consumption and my electric bill. 650 is the minimum you can use with the i7. I went with the minimum I could use. It is a true modular power supply. And when we get into the build, you'll see why we went with the true modular power supply in these small cases. But if, just for an example, here's the one that we, uh, I'm using currently. And you, I'm harvesting parts. I'm butchering parts out of it. But look at all this cable in here. And the cable looks like a mess. The small systems require modular power supplies. This is why we went with the power supply, with the modular. The 650 was I went for cost effectiveness over a 750 watt. There's, there's not going to be any difference on my on, on performance on my system. So I wasn't going to worry about it too much. Okay. We went with the uh, ATI video card. On this one, with that case, we had to find a medium profile card. This case will not take a full size extended dual U card. It just won't. So we went with a with a, a medium profile card just to get the best we can for what we can. This is a true custom build, and so basically I'm gonna have to cut out back parts of the case to make what we're gonna do happen. And because of that, I had to get an extension Molex connection. This is a 32-inch Molex connection extension. I picked it up online. It was like two to two or three dollars. It was cheap. The cooling system that we have for this small case is the Larcool water cooling system. This was um, after a lot of research. This was the one that we decided to get. A lot of the water cooling systems run five, six hundred dollars. That's more than the entire build combined for everything else. The water cool met our, our needs for what we were going to do at a cost effective $200. That's 
that's not bad. Now we got the extended cooling blocks. We got these extra cooling blocks and an extra radiator, which jumped our price up a little bit. But in the long run, I think it's going to pay off. We got the VGA water block, the Northbridge water block, and the Southbridge water block. And we're going to be putting those on this board sometime today. Now, a lot of you have questions about what type of liquid cooling you should use. Find something that's made specifically for your socket side. Okay, if you've got a uh, seven, uh, 775, use a liquid cooling system that has a 775 block set up. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen a liquid cooling system where they have used the wrong block size and they got leaks and they're using quarter inch tubing and they try to tweak it out to three inch tubing and it just doesn't work and the next thing you know you've got a ruined water block or uh, I'm sorry, a ruined uh, video card. Do a little bit of research. This is custom building. If you don't know what you're doing, find somebody who's going to do it for you. If you know what you're doing, do your research because it's going to pay off in the end when you're having a, a flawless installation. Now, the cooling, the cooling liquid itself is literally just distilled water. I see all these fancy stuff on here where you can spend $25 and get one liter of liquid cooling. What I did is I got an $8 bottle of UV dye and I got me a gallon of distilled water. Price on the distilled water was a dollar. Price on the UV dye was eight. I got an entire gallon of UV coolant for nine dollars. So don't don't get ripped off. Alright, so what I've already done is I've actually pre-measured these are the power cables for the case itself. Pre-measured these to the right length so we don't have to fumble around with them. Plus, it makes cable management within the case a lot easier. Same thing with this. I've already kind of pre-measured it. I've got zip ties on everything. Everything's where it needs to go. Power fan, all that stuff. All right. This is the, the uh, block that you have to put in so you can use the hard drive cage and a full-size video card. Now, remember, when I say full-size video card, I mean a medium profile card. All right. So we haven't put the plates in back. Everything is just a strict case right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to take the side with the standouts. Now, make sure you orientate your sides before you put your board on there, okay? If you put your board on there with your VGAs hanging out the back here, and then you're going to go to put it on, and you're going to be like, oh, crap. Pay attention to what you're doing. The little things matter. Okay. So remember, whenever you're building a system, the biggest concern is ESD, electrostatic discharge. Normally, I would build this on an anti-static map, but I don't have one today. I'm not in my office. So today, we are going to just be doing our best. This is our motherboard. Now, we are going to install our motherboard before we put our processor on. So it's just going to give us a working platform because look how large the panel for the case is. It's going to give us some ground to put our board on, make it stable. We don't have to worry about it falling over when we're trying to do the insertion of the uh, processor or anything else like that. Now, once we get the processor in, we're going to be taking it off so we can put the water blocks on. But for right this second, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting the processor on first. Okay. Okay, so all I've done now is put two screws and two standouts. And now we're going to go ahead and insert the processor. Now this little arm here comes off. Pull up. Pull back. It's going to fight me. And then this comes out. And that's our socket. Now, there's a little mark on each processor that will orientate you on where to put your your processor. Now the mark on the board is right here and it's indicated by a little white triangle with a dot. That tells me that's my orientation mark. Now, remember, this is the most fragile part of the installation. This is a zero force insertion processor. You do not have to push down on this to make it go in. Just sit it on there gently, gently tap it back and forth, and then put the cage down on top of it. 
If you have to use any force in the installation of this processor, you will destroy it. It's just that simple. So this is the i7 processor still inside the case. Doesn't look like much, but boy, it does a job. Now here is that mark that we line up with this mark on the board. It's a little golden arrow on the top of the processor. Now, I'm going to open this in, stick it on there, gently open it, pinch it out, and boom, there it is. I fell right into place. Now I'm just literally just finger weight on top, moving it back and forth, making sure it's in the right spot. And now we close this, bring this down, close it, you'll hear it link. Now here we go. There it is. That processor has now been installed.